Shivering in your makeshift shelter, clutching a rusty spork for warmth? Let's talk hero gear. It's the difference between building a snowman and building a snow fortress that chills polar terrors and other survivors to the bone. This guide will turn you into a hero gear pro in 10 minutes flat. Hey my survivors, buckle up for a blizzard of epic gear tips and whiteout survival. Forget flimsy furs and scavenged scraps. We're about to transform your heroes into ice smashing, wasteland dominating machines. But before you go equipping random popsicle sticks as weapons, let's dive in. Level 15, furnace, gear up time. Remember that rickety old furnace you've been neglecting? Turns out at level 15, it unlocks the hero gear equipment. Equip these frosty upgrades and watch your heroes explode with attack, defense, health, and even troop buffs. Hero gear is troop type specific. This means you can only equip hero gear designated for the troop type of your heroes. For example, our favorite mythic hero Molly is a lancer, identified by the blue lancer icon, and so can only equip hero gear designated for lancer heroes, which corresponds to the same icon on the gear itself. The game does this automatically and won't even show you hero gear for other troop types when equipping the gear. So they got your back. From common to mythic, unlocking hero gear's true potential. Hero gear comes in five tiers. Gray is your basic cardboard box level, while green and blue are decent upgrades, but the real party starts with purple and gold. These bad boys are forged in the fires of Mount Doom itself, packing stats that'll turn your heroes into unstoppable killing machines. Each gear boosts certain stats. Headgear gives your heroes buffs for hero attack and health, along with a lethality command boost for that hero's troop type. Gloves give your heroes buffs for hero defense and health, along with a health command boost for that hero's troop type. Belts give your heroes buffs for hero defense and health, along with a health command boost for that hero's troop type. Boots give your heroes buffs for hero attack and health, along with a lethality command boost for that hero's troop type. Mythic Gear, Holy Grail or Frostbite Pain. Now, the not so sunny news. Right now, snagging myth hero gear is like finding a diamond in a blizzard, rare and often locked behind special events or in-app purchases. We get it devs, gotta keep the lights on in the apocalypse. But hey, maybe some epic wasteland challenges or frost worm hunts could reward us legendary loot. Just throwing that out there. only way to obtain mythic gear is with arena tokens. You get them regardless of whether you win or lose, so don't forget to do your daily arena. Also, keep an eye out for special events and challenges that offer hero gear chests. I personally haven't gotten a mythic from these pulls, but you might get lucky. First things first, forget those flimsy gray scraps. They're about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. We're talking green, blue, purple, and even the mythical gold gear. Each one packs a punch of buffs that'll have your heroes carving through frost spiders like hot knives through, well, ice, obviously. But hold your reindeer. There's a trick to unlocking this epic power. It's called enhancement, and it's like giving your gear a shot of rocket fuel. Every level boost unleashes more attack, defense, health, and even troop buffs that'll turn your squad into an unstoppable blizzard of awesomeness. So how do you do it? It's easier than navigating a maze blindfolded on Red Bull. Just head to your hero's gear tab. You know, the one with the flashy red dot that screams, enhance me. There you'll see what gear you can upgrade, how much it'll pump up your stats, and the juicy enhancement points needed to make it happen. Think of enhancement points like snowflakes. The more you collect, the bigger the blizzard of buffs you can unleash. You can grab them from spare hero gear you don't need or those handy enhancement XP components that drop like loot pinatas. Just tap quick select for an automatic blizzard of upgrades or handpick your gear like a true wasteland connoisseur. Next up is mastery forging. Think of it as supercharging your gold gear. Then boom, 
you unlock an extra boost to its main stat and all its fancy perks. Essence stones are your fuel for this upgrade, so start stockpiling. Mastery Forging provides a percentage buff to both the gear strength along with all other buffs provided by that piece of gear. Once both requirements are met, tapping on the piece of gold gear to enhance it presents you with the Mastery Forging button along with the Normal Enhancement button. Tapping the Mastery Forging button opens the screen where you can see the items needed to increase the Mastery Forging level of the gear. Essence Stones are used for these upgrades. Once you have completed the process, you will see the Mastery Forging level of the gear displayed on the bottom right of the gear thumbnail in yellow text. Next, let's talk exclusive gear. Mythic heroes get this special bling that's like putting on a wasteland crown. It's a massive power spike, cranking up hero stats, and even giving your troops a health and lethality boost. Plus, you get two extra skills. Think of them as secret wasteland moves. The catch? You gotta upgrade it with widgets. There are a few ways to obtain widgets as a free-to-play player. First is the mystery shop. Pro tip is to wait for the 50% discount to obtain widgets. Two other ways is with the Tundra Trading Station and the Hall of Heroes. My personal strategy was instead of max spinning on wheels, I focused on instead leveling up my VIP and spent gems on obtaining widgets for my mythic heroes. I will go into detail in a later guide why I think this is a better return for your account. Collect five widgets to equip on your mythic hero then level it up max level 10 with more widgets. That will cost cost total of 275 widgets and some mythic gear. As a free to play, I think leveling to level five should be more than sufficient than maxing out the widget. As for skills, level one unlocks your first secret move. Level two unlocks the second. Some moves boost your hero's skills. Others power up your troops. Basically, they turn your hero into a one person apocalypse wrecking crew. Cool thing, each hero's widget and skills are unique. Tons of variety to make your favorite heroes even more badass. Remember, these suits are end game loot, so keep grinding those widgets and building your wasteland army. Finally, let's talk stats since gears are directly connected to them. Whiteout Survival features various combat stats that influence your performance in battle. Here's a breakdown of the key ones. Troop Stats Attack This directly determines the amount of damage your troops deal to enemy units. Higher attack translates to more punch in each blow. Defense This reduces the incoming damage your troops take from enemy attacks. A strong defense makes them sturdier and more resilient. Health This represents the total hit points your troops can withstand before being defeated. More health allows them to take more punishment before falling. Lethality as mentioned earlier, lethality bypasses enemy health and directly increases damage dealt. It is the percentage chance to land critical hit on the enemy's troops. Additionally, it has a chance to burn a percentage of the enemy's remaining HP. Attack and Defense Think of these as your troops' basic stats. Attack is their punch. The higher it is, the more damage they deal. Defense is their shield. The stronger it is, the less damage they take. A balanced mix is key for a well-rounded force. Lethality and health. These are the extra layers of combat spice. Lethality adds a bit of venom to your attacks, giving you a chance to deal bonus damage and potentially take down enemies faster. Health, well, it's pretty straightforward. It's how much punishment your troops can take before they're out of the fight. Pro tip. From many testing by several players, it is better to boost health and lethality than attack and defense.